Amen. Good morning and welcome to the Sunday School Service of the Church of God. What a blessed day and a privilege to share His Word. Today we start a new quarterly, and it is titled A Study of Peter's First Epistle. So we will be studying about the Apostle Peter and the words that the Lord has inspired him to write. And before we begin, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your everlasting love and your amazing grace. Father, we thank you for your presence in our life, this ministry, the service that you have granted to us. Father, we thank you for the time, for the opportunity to worship you and to learn of you. Our Lord, we humbly ask that you may guide us today with your Holy Spirit, with your mind, that we may be able to understand you, to be able to follow after you, that we may love your words and we may live it every day. Father, we humbly ask that you minister to all of our needs. You know our hearts, you see our hearts. Father, you may help us to overcome this world and to be victorious for you, to live a victorious Christian life. Father, we know that you're with us and we know that we have your blessings. This we humbly pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The title of our first lesson is Peter, an Apostle. We will draw our scriptures from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 20, Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 and 29, John chapter 13, verses 8 and 9, Luke chapter 22, verses 34, 54, 60 to 62, and Acts chapter 2, verses 14 to 16, chapter 3, verse 6, and chapter 4, verse 13. Our aim today is to understand the Apostle Peter's calling and character. When I think of the Apostle Peter, a few of the iconic verses or scenes in the Bible come to mind. The first one that comes to mind is a verse that we will be studying today, is when the Lord Jesus Christ found him and his brother mending their nets. And the Lord Jesus Christ called on them to follow after him, for they will he will make them fishers of men. The second scene is the Apostle Peter on the boat with the Lord Jesus Christ. That in the middle of the storm, he saw the Lord walking. And again, we will be looking at this later on. And that he desired to walk on water as Jesus did. And for a moment, the apostle started to walk on water. And lastly, as we have studied before, Peter's denial of our Lord Jesus Christ as he denied him three times, as the Lord predicted he would, and he fell from grace. But through all that the Apostle Peter went through, all the trials, all the temptations, he came out victorious in the end. That through it all, he persevered and stayed true to our Lord. That he did not give up the fight. He did not stop worshiping or serving the Lord. But he kept going. So we see that he was a strong Christian. A strong follower of Christ. That the Lord chose him for a purpose. And today we will see and learn about his calling and his character. Amen. Let us begin in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, 
elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, and to the obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. The Apostle Peter, in his letters to the brethren, introduces himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ. That we see that when we are called by Christ, when we are given a ministry by Christ, that is how we identify ourselves. We do not identify as our work in this world, but we identify as a spiritual ministry that is given to us. And that we are proud to be a follower of Christ. Right. We are proud of the work that he has given us. And we see how he how he writes to the brethren as he calls them strangers. Another definition for strangers is foreigners. And it is an apt description of the brethren for they were scattered throughout the land preaching the word of the Lord, that they have kept his commandment to go into all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. And so they were all foreigners, for they were not of those lands. But they went out into the world, obeying the word of our Lord. And they were scattered throughout, being foreigners, strangers in foreign land but doing it all for the love of Christ. And as we all, in a general sense of speaking, the Christians are foreigners in this land anyways, because we are not of this world. We are sent here by God to minister for Him. For we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, And thank the Lord for that calling, for it is the greatest calling that anyone can get. But Peter was not named Peter in the beginning. Peter was named Cephas. Cephas was his birth name. But when the Lord Jesus Christ found him, when the Lord Jesus Christ talked to him, he told him that he will give him a new name. That he will be called Peter, for he will be as a rock. It, Peter is described as a rock because of his faith. He is solid. He is unmovable. He is in our Lord. But what, what a comparison to our life. That we may not have our names changed, but we did have our names changed. That we were of this world. We were sinners. But when the Lord Jesus Christ found us, He gave us a new name. Now we are called Christians. Amen. We were of this world. We were not of God. But after, the, after Christ has called us, we now have a new name, as Peter has a new name. And in verse 2, the apostle called them the elect, because we are all selected by the Lord. We were called out of this world to serve Him, called out to worship Him, to be saved from our sins. For many are called, but few are chosen. But the Lord God chose us. And in verse 2, we see how the Holy Trinity is painted here by the Apostle. At first, he mentions the God the Father, that we were chosen by Him according to His foreknowledge. Now some may use this as a, as a reason to back up their re, of the back up their false doctrine of predestination that according to them 
that God has already chosen those who will be going to heaven and those who will be going to hell. But do not be deceived by the doctrine of the devil. For foreknowledge does not mean predestination. For it is the God the Father that has the omniscience, the omnipresence to know all. For he is the all-powerful God. If you put this in simple terms, the laws of nature are understood by man in this world. If you stand outside and it is raining, you know that you will get wet. It does not take a vision of the future to know that water causes wetness. And so it's the same with the foreknowledge of the Lord. It goes against the gospel to predestinate souls to go to hell or to go to heaven. Just look at the heart of the Bible. Now, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave Him for the world for whosoever will believe. What is the point of choice? What is the point of if? If God has predestinated some to go to hell or to go to heaven. To so believe in the gospel of the Lord. On his truth. Because it is by the God the Father that we are chosen. And then next we have the sanctification of the Spirit. It is by the Holy Spirit that we are sanctified. Sanctified because it is the Holy Spirit that is the holy fire of God. To go into our hearts to cleanse us from all the excess. From all that is unacceptable to the Lord. And it is only by the work of the Holy Spirit that we are cleansed, purified before God. It is only by His work and no one else, not of ourselves, but this is the promise that Jesus Christ promised His apostles. This was the promise, the prophecy that was given in the Old Testament to Joel. And lastly, we have the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ is our salvation. It is by His shed blood, His shed life, that we have eternal life through Him. Now we see how the Apostle compared it to the sprinkling of literal sacrifices. To the sprinkling of the sacrifice of our Lord. That this was not shed once. Just for one person or one soul. But this is continually shed for us. That it, this is available for all those who will accept it. For it is only by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved. That He is the only Savior in this world. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. And thank the Lord. For it is by Him that we have life. We see how the Holy Trinity works together. Works together to restore the image of God in man. Works together to give man a peaceful and abundant life. But most of all to give man an eternal life. To give man a hope for this world. And lastly, the Apostle Peter signing off to bless his brethren with more grace and peace be multiplied. That that is our prayers that is our wishes for our brethren. For God to bless them more. For God to lead us into victory. That it is truly the Christians who have 
the most grace, the most peace in this world. The grace of our Lord is always on us. It is the grace of God, the unmerited favor that is with us always. And there is no other peace in this world but the true peace that the Lord Jesus Christ can give. The peace with God, peace with ourselves, peace with our fellow man because we are saved from sin. And we are able to pray this for our brethren because the Lord supplies us with it. The more grace, the more peace that we are supplied, the more we can pray for others to have it. That as the Lord blesses us more, the Lord requires more of us. To whom much is given, much is required. So let us keep praying, my brethren. Encouraging one another, helping one another. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 20. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their net and followed him. Here we have the Lord Jesus Christ calling on these two brothers, Andrew and Peter. Now it was said that Andrew had already met the Lord Jesus Christ. For Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. But Peter had not met him. And so the Lord Jesus Christ went out by himself. To go out and choose his apostles. To call him, call them to follow after him. And the Lord is still doing that today. That he may not be here in the physical sense, but it is he who is going out and calling people to serve him. To serve him. It is he who is touching the hearts of men. To call them to service. To call them to serve him. And we see the character. And the calling that the, the Apostle Peter. Has here. The calling. The high calling of God. To serve him. To follow after him. But take notice of the character of the brothers. That here, they have a man who they, who they do not know. Telling them to follow after him. Basically telling them to leave everything behind and follow after him. But the Lord Jesus Christ did not only say this to those two brothers, but he has said it to all of us. That if any man will come after me, the Lord says, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Did not these two brothers deny themselves? That they had a job. They were fishers. That was their livelihood. That was their everything. And yet when the Lord came and called them, they dropped everything and followed him. This is what we are supposed to do. That when the Lord calls on us, we are not to think twice. We are not to reject His calling, but we are to obey His calling. For we never know if we will have another chance to be called by Him. Take your one opportunity and follow after Christ. Leave your life behind. These two brothers left their life behind. That they were no longer fishers. They were now followers of Christ. And they believed on his word. They had faith. They had trust and dependence on, on the Lord. That he will look after all their needs. 
for the material needs are very low on, on the priority list. For there is nothing more important than our spiritual needs. And so the Lord called them to a higher calling, to be fishers of men, to win souls for Him. It is a high calling, truly, to all the children of God. For you are called, all of you are called to be fishers of men. So let us be as the Apostle Peter. With all humility and obedience, let us be quick to obey God, to trust Him, to have faith in Him, and to always be humble. Because it is only by His calling that we are able to do this. We cannot work for God, we cannot minister for Him, unless He calls us to it, unless He graces us. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, 14, chapter 20, Matthew chapter 14, verses 28 and 29. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me, bid me unto you on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. To go to Jesus. Now here we have. The apostles. On the boat. That they all of a sudden came to a storm. And. The Lord Jesus Christ was not with them at the time. But they saw a figure. Walking on water. And they were all scared. For they thought it was a ghost. But we see Peter, who saw his Lord and Savior, walking on the water. And we see his faith. We see his spiritual eye, knowing that that was his Lord. That there is no need to fear. For it is he that saved them. He who is their Lord and God is with them. And we see how he wanted reassurance from the Lord that it was him. That there is nothing wrong in asking the Lord for his will. That we see that the Apostle Peter asked him, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come to you. This is when we pray to the Lord. If it is your will, O Lord, let your will be known to me. There is no no fault in you in asking the Lord for confidence. In asking the Lord for His will. The Lord wants you to seek His will. The Lord wants you to be sure in everything that you do. And to be sure in everything that you do, we seek the will of the Lord. For there is nothing more perfect, nothing more sure than the will of God in our life. And so, the Apostle Peter, once receiving the assurance from the Lord that, yes, come, come to me. And he was able to walk on water. It was not by the Lord Jesus Christ that Peter was able to walk on water. But it was by the faith of the Apostle. That by faith in God we can do all things. That the impossible is possible with our Lord Jesus Christ. It is possible with faith. That we are able to do all of this. If only we believe. So we see that trust there in the Apostle Peter. Trust in the faith that he practiced. That we say we want more faith. We say we want more belief in God. Dependence on him. 
So let us practice it. And when we ask for it, let us practice what we ask. Yeah. That the Lord will not just give it to you. And all of a sudden we have the faith that we need. We need to use the faith that we have. Yeah. And the Lord will add to you. According to his grace. And he will answer your prayers. Believe on that. Amen. John chapter 13 verses 8 and 9. Peter says unto him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash you not, you have no part with me. Simon Peter says unto him, Lord, my feet only. Not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. In John chapter 13, we have the Last Supper. That this was one of the last few days of our Lord with his apostles. The last few days before he was to be crucified. That in that Last Supper, a few of the ordinances of the church were established by our Lord. And one of them being washing of the feet. That the Lord went around washing the feet of his disciples. And when he came to Peter, Peter, as we can see, was quick to speak, quick to react. And I understand how the Apostle Peter reacted. That he acted not out of malice, not out of ill intent towards the Lord. But he acted out of respect. He acted out of humility. For this was his Lord Savior. This is God. Washing his feet. That I know anyone. Would be ashamed if the Lord were to do that to us. But Jesus had. Had a goal. In doing that. That he was showing. The disciples. Of what the kingdom of God is. His kingdom is of humility. His kingdom is not of power or tyranny or authority, but it is of humility one to another. That no one is above the other, not even our Lord Savior. But we are to serve one another. That we see how humble of a king of our Lord is. It is said that a leader must be a good follower. So he was following his own words. To be humble towards one another. To serve one another. And how he served all the apostles. He cleansed them. Washed their feet. Now this was only a literal cleansing. And when the apostle Peter realized. That he needed to humble himself. He desired for the Lord to wash his whole body. He said not just my feet but my hands and my head. He saw his need to be cleansed by the Lord. That after that initial rejection of saying that I do not need your cleansing. He accepted the Lord. Now we can apply this to ourselves. That this is our Lord coming to us saying, My child, you need to be cleansed. That there are things in your life that you must learn to let go. There must things in your life you must give up to the Lord. To offer to Him a living sacrifice. And I know as the Apostle Peter There will be initial rejection from us. An initial resistance. 
For we will always be resistant to change. Because change is not comfortable. But once we realize our need. Once we let the Lord into our hearts. To see the need to be cleansed by Him. To be perfected. To be consecrated and sanctified by Him. It will be for our good. It will be well with us. Now this will be a spiritual cleansing of our souls. That you who have been cleansed already by your salvation from the Lord Jesus Christ. Will need to be cleansed for the final work of grace of sanctification. Yeah. <clears throat> that by the second work of grace. All the carnality. Any remaining sin of the original sin will be burned up by the Holy Spirit, making you holy and acceptable before God. Amen. Luke chapter 22, verse 34. And he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day. Before that, you will deny me three times. That you know me. The Lord warning. The apostle because. He was overconfident. That before this verse we have the apostle. Speaking to our Lord. Proclaiming. His faithfulness in him. Telling him. That even till death, till prison, I will be with you, my Lord, he said. That the Apostle Peter and his overconfidence was blinding him. And the Lord could see that. That this would be a cause of his downfall. And we also have before this verse. Of the Lord warning the apostle. Of how Satan. Has asked for him. That he may be sifted as wheat. And the Lord had told him. That I pray for you. Because the Lord can see. The trials, the temptations that will come upon us. That I want you to remember that nothing will come to you without the permission of our Lord. Amen. That everything that comes to us is to increase our faith, increase our love for God. So that is why He allows it. And for the Apostle Peter, it was going to test his faith, test his loyalty. That he has already told them what will happen. That three times he will be denying the Lord. Now we do not get any such warnings for any temptations we face today. Because the Lord has also warned us that we must be watchful, that we must be ready, we must stand, stand in our faith, believe on the Lord. For the devil is as a roaring lion looking to whom he may devour, that we do not know how he will attack us. But when he does, be sure. To be ready. Let us not be overconfident. But let us be confident in our Lord. In our faith. Not going above Him. Not going before Him. But waiting on the Lord. Always be humble before Him. For we are standing today because of Him. We cannot do anything without Him. 
So let us be sure to acknowledge him in all of our ways. And he will direct your path. Luke chapter 22, verses 54 and 60 to 62. <clears throat> then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And Peter said, Man, I know not what you say. And immediately, while he yet spoke, the rooster crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord. How he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. So now the Lord Jesus Christ was taken, taken by the soldiers to be crucified, taken to the high priest's house. And we have Peter, who said he would go to, to death, to prison with the Lord. And yet he followed afar. He followed from far away. He did not follow from far away so he could follow him secretly. But because he was afraid. But he followed him all the way to the high priest's house. Sitting with the... With the servants. And one of them recognized him. Are you not. The man with Jesus. Are you not his disciple. And this was his first denial. That he said. I do not know what you say. Or I believe this was his third. Third denial. Because after that the rooster crew. And it was not the rooster crowing that triggered the memory of the apostle. But it was the Lord looking at his disciple. The Lord was within earshot of that conversation. The Lord could see his apostle. The apostle could see his Lord. And after the rooster crew, the Lord and Peter locked eyes. And with the look of our Lord, that was the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The look was that what triggered the memory. The prophecy of our Lord. That it did come true. Because of his overconfidence. Because he did not keep his faith. Because he let his fear overcome his love for God. That he chose. He chose to deny the Lord instead of staying true to him. But we see that when the apostle felt that conviction, he did not take one second to ignore it, to wait on it. But instead he left and he wept bitterly. That he took the conviction of the Holy Spirit and he acted on it. He repented of his sin. That the grace of our Lord was still in the heart of his disciple. That he was not completely alone. And thank God because by that the Apostle Peter was saved. Again, the, the Apostle Peter was not lost. And so it is a nice example for us. That if there be a moment that comes to your life. Where you fail our Lord. Make sure. That when he touches your heart. When he convicts you. When he speaks to you. Take that opportunity. 
Take that chance the Lord is giving you. For there is always hope in Him. That even in our lowest, lowliest moments, the Lord is so with us. And it is a nice picture that even when we treat the Lord when we treat Him in the least acceptable way, He still treats us in His most loving way. That we see the love of our God to us. That even when we deny Him, even when we turn our backs on Him, He does not turn His back on us. So be strong. Be faithful to our Lord. Choose Him. Deny yourself. Deny this world. Deny anything that will come between you and your God. Choose to serve Him. Choose to love Him. Choose to obey Him. Because He has always chosen you. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 14 to 16. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, You men of Judea and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known to you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now here we have in Acts chapter chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. This was the blessed day that they were to wait for, the blessed day that the Lord promised to them, that He will send them a comforter, that they will to tarry at Jerusalem until He came. And so there was around a hundred of the followers of Christ in that upper room. That they stayed there until they received the Holy Spirit. That when He finally came, we see how the Apostle was bold, not as he once was bold and brazen, but he was confident in our Lord by the Holy Spirit that is now in him. That now he stood up as a leader. Telling them that this was a promised day. This is a prophecy from the old covenant fulfilled in their time. That the Lord has kept his word. That these men who were in the upper room are now sanctified. Who now had all sin burned up in their heart. To be made pure and holy before our God. That we see the power that is given to a child of God who gives their all to Him. A child of God who is sanctified can do everything for God. A child of God who is sanctified and a child of God who has given their all to Him. And we see how they were blessed on that day. That on the preaching of the Apostle Peter, 5,000 was saved. A nation was saved in one day. That when the Lord works in the hearts of men, there is nothing that can stop Him. That we see that the Lord used His apostles as a powerful instrument Amen. to deliver His word. That these people were not saved by the Apostle Peter, but they were saved by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit giving the Apostle power in his words to convict and to help these souls 
to draw them to God. That is the difference between a spirit-led child of God and one who just uses their knowledge and their head to preach. There is an effect when the child of God speaks, when his minister speaks, for it is backed up by, the, by his Holy Spirit. It is backed up by the grace of God. And that prophecy of the, of the prophet Joel. That there will come a day when sons and daughters will prophesy. And it came true on that day with the Apostle Peter until our day today. That it is our privilege our calling to prophesy for the Lord. To be used by Him if we allow God to use us. So you're encouraged today to let God use you. As a clean instrument. To preach, to teach His Word. That you may be fishers of men. Amen. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now here in Acts chapter 3, verse 6, we have the Apostle Peter and the Apostle John walking to the temple to pray. And there was a lame man who sat at the gate for most of his life, I believe, for he could not walk. And he was looking to them for money. He was begging for money. And the apostles, who did not have much, they barely had enough to sustain themselves. But what they did have to give is grace, is love, is healing. And we see how the Apostle Peter, fulfilling his calling in our Lord, fulfilling what the Lord has called on him to do, to preach his word, to heal the sick. And that he had compassion on the soul. That he did not look down on him just because he was poor or because he was sick. But instead, he had mercy on him. And so we will, we will do well to, to copy ourselves after the Apostle Peter. To have mercy, to have compassion upon all souls. No matter who they are. For all souls deserve salvation. All souls deserve healing. Yeah. And we see his honesty with this soul. That I have nothing to give you. But what I will give you is much more than that. That maybe through his healing, his soul may be saved as well. But we see the faith in the apostle. His complete trust in our Lord. That he knew that the Lord was with him. He took the hand of the, of the beggar, lifted him up, and he was instantly healed. The power that is in the Apostle to heal, to do the work of the Lord, was completely in him. He was, he was completely blessed, for he has given his all to God. When we give our all to God, he will give his all to us. That there is nothing you cannot do. God's healing is still possible today. God heals His children every day. And we have many brethren who are in need of healing today. And we pray for every single one of them. 
for the prayer of faith, the grace of our Lord, they will be healed. Believe and not believe in the word of our Lord. Amen. Acts chapter 4 verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus. And now this is a scene afterwards. They healed that beggar. That they, the Pharisees, were not happy with John and Peter. But these two disciples, now filled by the Holy Spirit, could speak the word of God as well as they could because of the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That they were speaking to learned men, men who had education, men who followed the old law to the letter. But the letter is that they had no faith and they were nothing in comparison to these two disciples. And for we know that the Lord chose the humble to serve Him. The Lord has chosen the meek, the dumb, to confound the wise. For once again, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of humility. God has chosen the lowest to show the world that you do not have to be anything to serve God. That God takes pity on anyone. That it is not your accomplishments in this world. It is not your ability, but it is your availability. It is whoever will give themselves to God to be used by Him. Amen. And we see that through, through the Holy Spirit they were able to preach the Word of our God with all power all power and grace to show these men who they were, that these men were followers of Christ. They were Christians. And that they were no longer known as fishermen. They were no longer known as unlearned men. But because of what the Lord did for them, and it says that they took knowledge of them, that they had been. That they had been with Jesus. That is the best description that anyone could ever get in this world. That we are not known by our life. We are not known by what we do. But we are known by who we follow. That they are Christian. Followers of Christ. For we have forsaken ourselves and followed after Christ. We gladly empty ourselves, humble ourselves before God to hide ourselves behind Him. That the world may only see him and not us. <clears throat> Thank the Lord for the example of Peter. That he, he is an example 
of the Christian journey. That our journey is not perfect. That we will fail the Lord sometimes. Because it is true that the flesh is weak. But that does not make us weak before God. It is not an excuse to fail Him. But it is our spirit that should be willing to do all for God. To continue to strive to do all for Him. And we see that even though the Apostle Peter failed. And he was rebuked by our Lord many times. He kept going. Kept going, kept growing, kept succeeding. So we have victory in our Lord. If you just keep going, if you have faith in Him, keep plugging through. The Lord will always bless us. And remember what He said to the Apostle Peter. I am praying for you. The Lord is praying for you today. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to keep your faith. To stay on that narrow road. He wants you to grow. And He wants you to make it on that last day. So let us have faith. Trust in the Lord. Let us continue in our Christian walk. For the Lord is with us. We can do all things through Him who strengthens us. Thank God, thank God and God bless you all. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your good graces, your love, for blessing us today. We thank you for inspiring us with the life of your Apostle. Your apostle who was ever faithful and loving to you. The Father, though he failed, he kept going. He stood up and was faithful to you until the end. Our dear Lord, may you continue to inspire your children to be as your apostle. Help us, dear Lord, to be faithful to you. To always trust in you. To not trust in ourselves, but be confident in you. Father, may you help us to always be diligent, to help us be ever humble before you. To let you use us as clean instruments. And most of all, Father, may you help us to walk towards perfection, to sanctification. May you help us, dear Lord, to leave ourselves, to follow after you and take up the cross. Father, there's nothing more important in this world than you. My Father, we pray that you keep us in your name, strengthen your children, encourage them, May you help them in whatever trials or temptations they're going through right now. For Father, we are strong in you. We can do all things with you. And Father, we pray for all your brethren, for all your children who are in sickness today. Father, we pray for every single one of them. Sister Tita, Sister Hilda, Sister Ophelia, Brother, Ro Brother Roy, Sister Jazz, and to many more, my Father, who I have not mentioned, but you know every single one of them. Yeah. Father, as you heal that lame man, our dear Lord, we humbly pray. They heal your children. To cleanse their bodies. All in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For by his stripes we are healed. Amen. My Father, we thank you 
for the healing, for the grace, for the victory. For you are always with us. Father, this we only pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.